the issues are a great place to start contributing and in particular if this is your first time developing you might also find it a good place to start by clicking this good first issue label. Hey everyone, welcome back to Coding with Kiskit. This is Abe. So in today's episode, we're going to be making our first contribution to the open source software Kiskit. The idea here is that we're going to look through the issues in Kiskit, in particular in a component of Kiskit called Kiskit Terra. And among these issues, we're going to pick one interesting one and find possible solutions to it. Once we've identified a solution, we're going to submit that solution back to the open source software. And in this way, we're going to have become official contributors to the open source software. This is a meaningful contribution that we're making because it impacts not just the software, but the entire quantum computing community. So in this video, we'll walk through all of these steps individually. We'll download Qiskit. We will find these solutions on our computer by navigating through the code. And eventually we'll go through the process of submitting changes to the code back to GitHub. So let's get started. So as we've mentioned before, Qiskit is open source software. And what that means is you have the ability to contribute to it and even fix issues and contribute to the development of quantum software. So what I'm going to do here is start off first at the Qiskit.org webpage. Here I have my browser open. I'm going to go to the GitHub page for Qiskit and GitHub is where the open source software lives. When you go to this GitHub page, uh, you'll see a few pinned repositories and a list of other repositories. And we're going to start off by looking at the four elements of Qiskit. So Terra, Ignis, Aqua, and Air. And the idea here is that Terra is the foundational layer. And this is where we've been building circuits in previous videos. This is how we've been executing things. Uh, this, this, this Terra foundational layer is where we'll be focusing on today. What I want to do is show you how we can fix an error work through an error with you live and submit a change to the code so that we fix that error in Qiskit Terra. So the best place to start is by clicking this Qiskit Terra repository and looking here in the issues. The issues are a great place to start contributing and in particular, if this is your first time developing, you might also find it a good place to start by clicking this good first issue label. When you do that, now all the issues that you're seeing are those that have the good first issue tag applied to them. So if you uh, don't find anything that says good first issue to click on, you can also just type this in the search box. So you just say is issue is open and the label is good first issue uh, and then hit search. Uh, so these first uh, good first issues are great to work on and to get started contributing to Qiskit. And today what I want to do is work through one of them with you. So looking down the list, you can see a list of ones to work on. So let's say maybe this one. So the idea here is that someone has reported this issue and uh, the issue says there is an inconsistency in how the parameters of the gate are showed in the circuit plot. So it looks like this code which by now you should be familiar with uh, is adding a U3 gate and a CU3 gate uh, and is drawing them. So this is the output of the drawing function. And you can see the person is reporting the inconsistency between how these numbers don't have any parentheses around them, but these ones do. Okay, so the issue we have to fix is figuring out why there's this inconsistency. Uh, the person is saying, if I have to choose, I would go with removing the parentheses everywhere, but for sure it should be everywhere the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the person is reporting another inconsistency. So he's now saying circuit all dot draw output MPL. And it looks like if you pass in the argument use pi format, you get pies here, but you get nothing on this gate. Uh, if you don't use pi, you get back the previous plot, but you have this inconsistency with the parentheses. Okay, so it looks like generally we're going to be trying to fix this problem. Uh, one good habit to have is to look through what progress has been made so far. So someone here commented that they're interested in trying this out. Uh, before shooting this video, uh, I took a look at the issues and decided to uh, maybe try and work on this one. So I asked for permission to work on this and I said, how is this going? And once I got permission to go ahead, I'm going to be working on this. So it's just a good idea to make sure that you're contributing, but you're also not stepping on other people's toes. 
Let's go ahead with solving this issue. Um, how do we start? How do we begin? So what I'm going to do is uh, first begin by trying to modify this code, right? So somehow we need to get this code onto our computer. So I'm going to go to the Qiskit Terra repository, and then I'm going to fork it into my personal GitHub. So I click the fork link and I say to my own profile. And once this fork is complete, I'll have a copy of the code into my own profile. As you can see now, the GitHub page is my profile slash Terra. So this branch that I'm working on in my own fork is uh, even with master. And from here, I can continue with trying to work from my own computer. Okay, so once we forked the repository to our own personal GitHub, then we click the clone download link and copy over uh, the link to clone this repository. And in our computer, we go to terminal and type git clone and bring in the address for the repository. Keep in mind here that the address that I'm uh, pasting here is from my own personal git page. Once the cloning is complete, if you look in the directory, that should, there should be a folder called Qiskit Terra. Let's change into that folder. So I'm going to say CD Qiskit Terra and I'm going to say git status. So you see our branch is on master and we're up to date with origin master. And in particular, what I'm going to do is say git remote minus V and look at where origin points. So origin of this uh, folder points to the repository where we did our fork. There's also an upstream. So I'm going to add the Qiskit repository from which I forked to upstream here. So I'm going to say git remote add upstream and then I'm going to bring in the address of Qiskit Terra. Copy this particular link and paste it here. Notice that this time the upstream is pointing to the original Qiskit repository. Once you do that, then say git remote minus V and you should see that the origin is pointing to my personal repository and the upstream is pointing to the Qiskit repository. It's a good idea also to work on branches. So what I'm going to do is say git branch and I'm going to say the branch is going to be fix issue. And if I remember correctly, the issue number is 2822. So I'm going to say the name of the branch is fix issue 2822 branch. And then I'm going to say git checkout fix issue 2822 branch. And that means I've, cha I've changed over to this branch that I just created. And I can say git status. And you see I'm on this branch now instead of previously we were on master when we started this work. All right, now we're ready to start working. Uh, so in order to see any changes that I'm making in, uh, uh, in the code, what I like to do is work in an environment for Python that's different. So I'm going to also create a new environment. So to create uh, the new environment, I'm going to go to qiskit.org slash documentation, and I'm going to follow the instructions in the installing page and building Qiskit packages from source. So we'll put a link to this uh, page in the description as well. But the link that you're looking for, uh, the instructions that you're looking for are here. So conda create minus y minus n qiskit dev env. So that's the instruction that we're going to type into our terminal. So I'm going to say conda create minus y minus n. I'm going to change the name of the environment to fix issue environment. And I'm going to say python equals three. And conda goes ahead and creates that environment. And now we can activate that environment. You can simply paste uh, the instruction here, conda activate fix issue environment. And now you see this changes from base to the fix issue environment. The next step is to install Qiskit Terra from source. So we are already in the Qiskit Terra directory. So the instruction to do that is also on this page in our browser. So we're going to go down to this section, which says install Terra from source and we're going to run this list of things. So in particular, we've done our own clone. So we're going to ignore this line. We're changed into the directory already. So I'm just going to start from this particular line, which says pip install Cython. That's successfully installed. And then I'm going to say 
pip install minus r requirements dev. And once that completes, I'm going to go to the editable mode instructions and do pip install minus e dot. So pip install minus e dot. So the minus e tag here allows us to install pip in editable mode, which means we can edit the code and we don't have to do this installation over and over again in order to see changes from the code reflecting in our work. Okay, and once that completes, now we have Terra installed in this particular environment called fix issue environment, and now we're ready to start working. So what I'm going to do is quickly double check that Terra is installed. So I'll say Python. You can see that there's Python 3.7.4 in my environment. And what I'm going to do is say import kiskit and run that line. And you see we get an error that says there's no IBM Q provider and there's no Qiskit error. That's fine because we haven't installed these particular packages, but it looks like Terra itself is installed. So again, what I'm going to do is say Qiskit dot underscore underscore Qiskit underscore version underscore underscore. And that tells me that I have this Terra version, which is uh, the development branch and I have none of the other packages, which is exactly what we expect given that we just installed Terra only. So let's think about where we are now. So we have forked the repository from Qiskit to our own GitHub profile. And then we have downloaded that code onto our computer by cloning using GitHub. And what else have we done? We've also installed uh, this particular version of Qiskit Terra that we've downloaded into this particular environment that we've created. Okay, so what does that mean? Now we're ready to start running things with this version of Qiskit Terra. So I personally like to write code in Jupyter Notebooks. So what that means is now I need to launch Jupyter Notebooks and start writing code. What I'm going to do to keep things clean is also create a new kernel on which we'll run code in the Jupyter Notebooks. So the instructions to create a new kernel are available uh, from this page and we will also create uh, a link to this in the description below. So if you scroll down to kernels for different environments section of this page, and you use this particular instruction. This is the one that I'm going to use in my command line. So I'm going to copy this over. I'm going to exit out of this Python instance. I'm, so right now I'm in the Qiskit Terra folder. I'm going to go one above it. And then I'm going to paste in that piece of code from the web. And I'm going to say the name of the environment is fix issue environment. And the name is again going to come here. So this is the name of the environment that I'm installing the kernel in, and this is the display name that will be seen in uh, the Jupyter Notebook. So type that in, and we have the kernel installed. So what I'm going to do then is just say Jupyter Notebook. So that creates a new uh, Jupyter instance, and what I can then say is new, fix issue environment. So this is the one that we just created. I'm going to create a new Jupyter notebook and this is the kernel that's going to run. So let's do the same thing as before. I'm going to say import Qiskit, hit enter. Again, we get the same errors that we did, uh, that we got on the command line, which is we need to install Qiskit Air and Qiskit IBM Q provider. And if we say Qiskit dot underscore underscore Qiskit underscore version underscore underscore, we get the version of Terra and nothing else is installed. So far, so good. So now we're able to write code using this particular version of Terra in this particular kernel. All right, so now let's go back to the issue that we were about to work on. So the issue was uh, in the good first issues, I think it was number 2022. Yep. So this is the piece of code that the person has reported uh, that's creating the circuit. So let's copy that over into our Jupyter Notebook and see what happens when we run it. So as soon as we run it, we get an error, right? So it says name quantum register is not defined. So that's because we haven't done from Qiskit import everything. If we do that, now we get a new error which says name pi is not defined. And this error looks like it's coming because the person has not said import numpy as np and then said pi equals np.py. 
So now when we run this code, we're able to get the printout without errors. And it looks like this issue is showing up now, right? So we see pi, 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 and we see nothing in this gate. Uh, both gates are taking in the same parameters for the angle. So it looks like there's some issue that's causing the single qubit gates not to get uh, the printout of the angles, but the two qubit gates seem to be fine. Okay, so my instinct when I see something like this is to first see if it's uh, localized to just a matplotlib plot or to all kinds of circuit plots. So I'm going to copy this code over and just remove this argument and run it. So now this is the ASCII drawer uh, version of the circuit. Uh, so you see here the angles are showing fine uh, for both gates. So it looks like this issue is limited to uh, the matplotlib version of the code. Okay, that's, that's a hint as to what the problem might be. So now what I want to know is how this function dot draw works so that I can see how it does things without arguments and with arguments. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to ask for help on it. So one of the best things about Qiskit is that there are doc strings and they're very helpful in these functions. So if you just ask for help, you should see something that's very useful. So you see here, there's something that says help on text drawing in module qiskit.visualization.text. Uh, okay, so this thing takes arguments and gives these outputs. So let's look in this file, qiskit.visualization.text. So what I'm going to do is open a finder window and navigate to this particular piece of code. So this is uh, the directory where we're working now. So this is the Qiskit Terra folder that was cloned. And looking inside, we're looking for Qiskit visualization text. So I'll go to Qiskit, I'll go to visualization, and I'll look in the text uh, code. So what I'm seeing here is something that draws the text code. Okay, so these are all the details that are involved in drawing the quantum circuits. And it's probably fascinating to look through all of this. What I'm going to do is ask for where the MPL line exists. So nowhere. All right. Looking in the same folder, we have something for plotting in text. Uh, the matplotlib plot that I used uh, probably uses this particular file called matplotlib. So let's open that here as well. Look inside here. Okay, so this looks promising. So this looks like the fragment of code uh, that draws single qubit gates and uh, looks like we have multiple qubit gates as well. Uh, let's look in the single qubit k gate code. Ah, okay. I think we might have found our issue. So I'm seeing self.gate here and there's text that displays what kind of gate it is. So this is probably the name of the gate. And then there's subtext. Uh, I think these are the pi, pi, pi arguments that we're supposed to be showing. So let's, let's make sure first of all. So let's print PRM and just save that very quickly. And it looks like this is length less than 20 is when this shows. If length is bigger than 20, then this section of code runs without subtext. So let's also see what the length of uh, PRM is that we're trying to uh, work with. So I'm going to say print the length as well. So I'm going to then go back and restart the kernel and run everything again. Okay, so we are in the right section of code at least. So this is the PRM parameter and its length is 23. Okay, I think now we know what the error is, right? So if the length is less than 20, we show the subtext. Otherwise, we don't show the subtext. So if I make this number something like maybe 28, I don't know, uh, and rerun the piece of code, then we should see the parameters, right?
Ah, there we go. Okay, so now we get the numbers to show up. So we fixed at least that part. In terms of consistency, there's parentheses here and none here. So that's probably because of this. So let's remove this and go back to the code kernel, restart and run all. Yeah, now we have no parentheses and it looks like things are consistent. So that, that fixes the issue that was reported. So one more thing I'm going to do is this number 28 is something I just randomly picked. Let's make sure that we can display something like pi over two, pi over two and pi over two. So I'm going to do that and hit cell run all. So it looks like 28 is able to accommodate this because 25 is the length when you have one digit in all the denominators. Okay, so 25 is a reasonable number. I'm going to say 28 to be safe. Uh, I'm going to remove these print statements because I inserted them for debugging. And now we're ready to report that we fixed this issue. So one last check. I'm going to restart the kernel and run everything. No printouts for debugging and we get the consistency that we were looking for at first. All right, at this point, we're ready to now submit this code back to GitHub and report that we fixed the issue. So to be safe, one of the things that we have to do is make sure that we haven't broken anything in the process of fixing an issue. So we're going to run a few tests. So I'm going to go back to the command line and go back to the directory where I'm working. Uh, so I'm going to activate the fix issue directory fix issue env and I'm going to within this particular environment so right now we're in the Kiskit Terra uh, we're outside the Kiskit Terra folder I'm going to go inside again and I'm going to say make style so this is the first test that we're running and you'll see what it's going to do is make sure that the code is stylistically consistent so we haven't added maybe a space instead of two spaces that sort of thing so no errors reported here. I'm also going to run make lint. Lint is a much more thorough test, so it's going to consistently look throughout the code using regular expressions, and this can take a few moments. Uh, what you're going to do is once it reports whatever issues it finds, you're going to look through and see if any of those issues were caused by you, or if they're not caused by you. If they're not, then you're ready to move on. Once the linting completes, you can see that there are no particular errors that I've caused. So the code has been rated 10 out of 10. And in particular, there's this module that reported one error, but I wasn't working in this folder. So this must be something that someone else is working on. So I'll move on to the third uh, test and that's simply make test. And this is a thorough code of testing the code itself. Once your tests finish, make sure that there are no errors of the particular files that you changed. And if you see no errors, we're ready to move on. So the next step now becomes contributing this code back to GitHub. So I'm going to clear my terminal window. If, if you don't know yet, the keyboard shortcut is command plus K. And what I'm going to do then is say git status to see where things are. And you see it tells you we're on this particular branch. We've changed this particular file and these things are untracked. They were probably created during the testing process that we, uh, uh, that we ran. So in order to just uh, uh, submit the changes to these particular files and not these other ones, so I'll do git add minus u, and then I'll say git status again. And now you see this particular code file that I changed is green instead of red. All right, so this file is still untracked. What I'm going to say is git commit minus m, and I'm going to add an, a small piece of text to describe what I did. So fixed issue 2822 by updating, uh, let's see, by updating matplotlibdrawer. Okay, that's it. And now again, let's do git status. You see here um, that the status shows you 
that there's nothing uh, that we're going to put in the commit. So now we're ready to push. So we'll say git push. When you do that, you get this error message because you're working on a specific branch. So the fix is very simple. Just copy this line over and run that. So let's copy this over. Okay. So now that that's done, let's go back to the GitHub page. So we're going to go to github.com slash kiskit and kiskit Terra. And you see this message that says, hey, you just pushed something. So let's put a pull request to put these changes forward and ask for a review. So I'm going to say compare and pull request. And now the text that I wrote in the commit message comes in here. So fixed issue 2822 by updating. I'm going to say in the summary fixes number 2822. Uh, so there's a benefit to doing something like this. So when you do this, uh, so GitHub automatically understands that you're submitting this pull request to fix this issue. So it goes and closes that issue once the, um, once the pull request goes through. So let's put in some comments. So I try to be as descriptive as I can in the details and comments. And uh, in the summary, I try to say, fix the issue number that we're working on. Okay. So at this point, it's a good idea to look at the changes that you're submitting. So here you can see Git is telling us that this used to be the old line of code and I've submitted this. So remove the parentheses and change the limit to 28 characters. Okay, now we're ready. And there we go. So I'm going to create a pull request here. At this point, now that you've submitted the pull request, a few things are going to happen. First, some tests are going to run automatically and you can see them showing up on my screen. The other thing that you can do once the tests go through is to sign a contributor license agreement if you haven't signed it already. And that would happen here in this line. The final thing that will happen once all of these tests go through is that there are reviewers assigned to this particular repository. They'll look through this and submit it and allow it to be part of the code once it's reasonable. So as you can see, we've gone through the entire process of fixing an issue in Qiskit Terra. And what we did is effectively find that issue in GitHub, download that code to our computer, make those changes, run tests to make sure that those changes don't break anything, and submit those changes back to GitHub. And the changes that we've made here are quite impactful, right? So Qiskit is open source software, and this is one of the really cool parts about working in Qiskit. The changes that you're making, the fixes that you're doing are positive changes to a much bigger quantum computing community. And so there's chance to make a big impact here. So what I'd like to do is finish off by asking you to contribute to Qiskit as well. So go to Qiskit Terra, find an issue that looks interesting to you and tell us in the comments down below what issue you've started contributing to and what pull requests you've submitted as a result of that work. We'll see you in the comments.